God, I never thought I'd be doing this video. We are leaving our lovely home in Los Angeles, pulling our three girls out of school, and I've just booked a one-way ticket to Thailand. This is one of the craziest things me and my wife have done since we moved out of the north of England to Los Angeles in 2012. Back then, it wasn't that scary because we didn't have kids. Now we've got three young daughters, and it makes what we're doing way more nerve-wracking. Is pulling kids out of school a wise thing to do? How will I earn a living? What's in Thailand? Will I ever go back to the USA? Well, these are the things I'm going to talk about on this video and if you didn't know this is my second YouTube channel where I upload lots of different things like this so if you haven't already make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notifications so when I make a follow-up video on this You'll be able to see that. First, why the hell would we want to move out of our home? It's beautiful. We've got a swimming pool in the garden, a jacuzzi. We've got chickens that gives us eggs every day. We've got a sauna, got a cold plunge. I've got my YouTube studio in there. It's in a lovely location in the Calabasas area. I go to a great jujitsu gym nearby. Why would I want to move this life to somewhere else? Well, first, I want to bring it back a little bit. So the house that we're in, we'll love it, but we rent that place. We moved in there in 2020 during the pandemic and the value of the house was around $850,000 and the rent is around about $5,000 a month, which you might be thinking, that's crazy. And I get it, it is, but that's probably the going rate in Los Angeles. Now the house is lovely, but it's got lots of old things in it like we'd love to change, like the kitchen, the bathrooms, the floor, and, and all sorts of other stuff. Now, because we don't own the house, if you spend money on the house, it's kind of like dead weight. So we didn't really want to move out of the house we love it that much. And we understand the housing market is really high. So a few months ago, we offered the landlord 1.4 million to buy the house. And the landlord, didn't want to sell it. And to be honest, I don't blame them because the value of the market is still going up and the house is probably worth around 1.7 million now. And for that sort of money, you would think in Los Angeles, you would be getting a house like the Fresh Pinch, like the Fresh Prince, like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. But no, it's it's nothing like that at all. It's just a nice house in a nice neighborhood. And our landlord's been great. They know they've never put the rent up one time since we've lived there in two years. So we've stuck to that around that $5,000 a month mark. Sarah and I were already thinking about the prices in LA. It was so expensive and they were just continuing to go up. And we did some maths on what it was costing to live in LA. And before we bought any food, put any money away, and it was costing us around $10,000 a month or more just to be there with things like the insurance, the cars, the bills and things like that. Now that's over $120,000 a year before I've even bought a cup of coffee, before I even bought me chickens, some food to feed them. And then when we thought about that, it was like, whoa. This is so expensive. We looked online all the time for properties for sale in our area, and there was nothing. The houses similar to ours were up there at the two million or more mark. And then we looked further outside of Los Angeles, like Lancaster or Palmdale, and that's where it was more affordable. But the problem with them areas is there's no great school education, and we don't know the area, and I've heard that it's not that safe. So we stuck with our place. It's the way it's going to be, and we'll make it work, no problem. We've kind of got to, right? We've got kids, and they're in school in the area. Our eight-year-old will be going into second grade. Our six-year-old will be going into first grade. Now, our four-year-old will be going into TK. And we were still thinking, you know, with the summer holidays were coming up, what can we do? What options have we got out there? And we start watching videos on nomads. This is people who travel around the world and they'll just live wherever they are. And me and Sarah are very passionate about traveling. We'll love it. And it's something that we really planned on doing when the kids left school and they were growing up in around 15 to 20 years from now. That's the only time we could really do it, right? Because we all get told in life, you know, you go to school, you get a job, you get married, you have kids, and then your kids then do the same thing. That's kind of the circle of life, right? So the only time that we can travel is when we're in our 60s, when our kids have grown up. Now that we're 62 years old and the kids have left school, shall we go and travel the world now? So as the kids were about to have eight weeks off school and have a summer holiday, I had worked in Miami, in Chicago, in Canada, that I had to go to. I thought of an idea and I said to Sarah, I'll try and get these the work together and play with the dates and then why don't you come along with the kids and we can kind of try you know traveling and, and living and, and seeing how that goes because normally when i'm traveling and working i normally travel 
do my work, come back home, go to the next destination, come back home. But this time we merged it together and I brought everyone along with us. I actually vlogged them trips when we were away and I'm gonna be posting them soon on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of them. And even though we loved it and we loved the thought of it and the, and the buzz of it, it's still, it's a very scary thing to wanna to do and no one's ever done this who we know. And then the kids have got to go to school what we're going to do for money. We're settled in a house and that's what we do. How can we disrupt everything that we've built? And then we were thinking more and more about it. You know, my incomes always came from box and burn gyms, from doing personal training, from doing their academy where we travel around teaching trainers how to teach boxing to other people. And that's kind of how it's been for, for years. You know, in 2020, I start really investing into my main YouTube channel, my other YouTube channel, and that built and it's grew. And it's gotten to the point now with that channel where I've hired seven full-time people to work for me to help us, you know, grow that even more, which comes at expense, but there's revenue there. Then also my other way of income is by my online video packages. This year, I stopped earning money from the gym. You know, I'm totally hands off with Box and Burn Gyms right now. My business partners, Kevin Watson and Kerry Christie, are both taking the reins on that and, and they're flying forward with that. Why I focus my time and energy onto my passion, which is the Box and Fitness Connect program, where we're trying to help gym owners put boxing classes into other gyms. Then my one-on-one -on -one training that I was doing, I kind of really slowed down and stopped doing that, where I'm kind of training one or two people, but the people I'm training, you know, the friends, and I really like being around them. Even though it was great money when I did do it, because I wanted to use my time better. If I'm in a gym for two hours, training two people, I'm kind of trading my time for money and I'm trying to get out of trading my time for money and I'm trying to work towards, you know, building something greater and when my time's getting pulled away, doing things like that, it's just not, you know, great. And then when I thought about this, it clicked like, wow, I'm basically making 100% of my money, my wages, online right now. I can be doing this from anywhere in the world. Then my wife, Sarah, who was an ER nurse for 12 years, she left that job. During the pandemic, you know, the kids were being homeschooled like everyone's kids. And I was working full time. Sarah's mom and dad was there helping us loads, which was amazing. I don't know what we would have done without them. But Sarah as well, you know, she wanted to be home and help them with the kids. And then there's that, and there was also some other personal reasons. I she's just done an interview talking all about them with Voyage LA. The link will be below if you wanna really see why she really did leave working from the hospital. And now what she's doing, she's working on YouTube as well. Now, I never thought about it like this before, but the only real tie that we had to Los Angeles was the kids at school, other than our friends who we love very dearly, who we see maybe once a week, once every few weeks, who we can still speak to every now and then. But like, yeah, we're like, wow, we're actually free where well, we've thought for years since we've had the kids. And if you've got kids, you probably feel the same. Like you're not free because you've got responsibilities. And now it was becoming a bit like, maybe we can be free. Then we start speaking a little bit about homeschool, but it was like, ah, oh, the kids need that social side of life. Who would they socialize with? Is it unfair taking your kids out of that environment? Every kid needs to go to school, right? That's what we thought. Even though when I really think about it, a lot of the most successful people I've ever met in my life homeschool their kids. But still, it's something that I've not been brought up with, Sarah's not been brought up with, so we don't know. Then we dug a little bit deeper into this homeschooling, watched videos, read articles, and everything that we seem to be reading and watching seemed to be seemed to be really good and positive. A lot of people say now that homeschooling's been perfected, if you like, because of the pandemic. And at that time, everyone was doing this online learning. So now, because they've had all that much experience with it, now there's different softwares and platforms out there that people can use that is, you know, better than what they were doing at school, so the say. And as well, and what my biggest thing was the socializing, even though our three girls is totally best friends and they're with each other all the time, and they do most of their socializing right now at either jujitsu or gymnastics, these online platforms have meetups where people who are doing online schooling from around the world, wherever they're doing it from, there's areas of the world where they can you know, go and meet up and, and hang out with other kids as well. But again, I don't know how good this is because I've heard people talking about it. You know, um, that is something that you know, we'll find out in the future. But still, we were like, oh, 
we can't do this, surely we can't do this. And we were getting nervous thinking about it. Then when we were in Austin, just with the kids, three things happened in one night that was like, changed everything. The first thing that happened, our landlord sent us a message saying that there's gonna be a rent increase. And they also mentioned about us signing a two year lease into that house as well. Which to be honest, I don't blame them because it's the right thing to do. If I was in their shoes, I would have done the exact same thing. Because when we move out of that five grand a month house, you know, they're gonna get seven grand a month for that. Then this video popped up on my feed from Patrick David, who's a entrepreneur who I've followed for a long time. People in Los Angeles trying to buy a house now, it's harder than ever and it's only gonna get harder. And you know, people try to think about moving out to Palmdale and Lancaster and all that stuff. And it really related to us and I was like, wow. And I watched this for Sarah while we were in Austin and she watched it as well and she kind of opened her eyes. Then another thing popped up on the internet where it was talking about how homeschooling in LA now is the most popular it's ever been. A lot of parents are not sending their kids back to school this year. And that was like, wow, they're doing it as well. It kind of made it better for us and made us more confident in giving it a go. And the kids due to start school next week as well. And you know, my youngest was gonna be coming into a new school who she didn't know anyone. My other two had a couple of friends in school, but wasn't at the point where they were like best friends and they were hanging around with them after school, like what I used to do when I was a kid. Because in their lifetime, they've only ever done one full year of schoolwork with the COVID situation, everything happening. They've been homeschooled. So they still didn't build the solid relationships yet that we might have grew when we were kids. And you know, the kids had not been to school for like eight weeks. And I just thought, well, what if we don't send them for another four weeks and we live somewhere else in the world. Because after all, when you're working online, you can live anywhere in the world. Maybe, just maybe, we don't have to wait until we're 60 to travel and do what we're passionate about and experience different cultures. What if we do that now when we take our kids with us and they can experience different cultures and how much will they learn from that? And I'm lying in bed with all these thoughts bouncing through my brain and my stomachs turning with the butterflies and nerves. Could we really do this? Oh, why not? I finally fell asleep and I couldn't wait to wake up the next day to tell Sarah these crazy thoughts that I had. And then when I woke up, I said, listen, and I told Sarah, and Sarah said exactly what I thought she would say, and it was, let's do it. Then she said, let's go to Thailand. We've been to Thailand when we were younger. Let's do it again. She loved it there, and I loved it there as well. So I was like, yeah. Let's do it. Then we both got very nervous together. Also, Sarah's brothers live in Australia as well. And their mum and dad have been living with us and helping us so, so much in our life, our journey. And we couldn't be doing what we're doing without them. And one thing that her dad said to me when we were talking about Thailand, he was like, yeah, do it. It's great. It's my favourite country. So, and so knowing that they love it in Thailand, you know, that just makes it much better for us. So then I got my laptop, I opened it up and I booked five one-way flights to Thailand for Sarah, me and the three girls. And I booked it for the day after the kids were supposed to be going to school. We also paid three months up front of rent. So we've still got our house in Los Angeles. So we're not just totally leaving everything and we're gone because we've got so much stuff there that we need to go back and move it. Okay, so now, are we moving to Thailand forever? Well, the answer is, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. Just two months ago, we were trying to buy a house and live in Los Angeles for the long term and settle down and do the house up. So I've, I've got no idea. And you know what? That really, really excites us. And on this trip, when we go away, we might figure out that homeschooling isn't what it's all cracked up to be. The kids might not like it. They might want to go back to school. We might find out that we're missing Los Angeles and we want to be back there. We want to live there. And we might be thinking, what the hell were we thinking that we wanted to go to Thailand? And we might like to just settle down and go back to the way things were. But one thing I know that I won't be seeing in a year from now or five years from now. And that is, oh, remember when we spoke about going away to Thailand and trying and living somewhere else? I wish we did that. I'll not be seeing that. And like my good friend Michelle Farrell said when I texted her telling her about this, it's better to regret the things in life that you've done than to regret the things that you haven't done. And I don't think we'll be regretting this trip. Now, will we last long in Thailand? What will it be like? Well, click here, make sure you subscribe to this video and turn on your notifications so you don't miss another video when I upload it about this crazy journey.